G'day guys and welcome to a preview for Caulfield Cup Day, racing also at Ramwick and I'll be darting through both meetings as quickly as I can, try and spend a little bit more time on the major races. So uh, we'll start with with Ramwick as, as usual, uh, the rail in the true position, looks like it's going to be a firm track, a little bit of rain around but uh, I'm sure they'll probably be watering the tracks a bit too. Uh, the weather's been pretty good the last couple of weeks, so assuming it won't be too strong a bias, they'll probably get off the fence like they always do and, and try and get, you know, four, five, six off in the straight, and that'll be the best place to be, as usual there. It's sort of just off the speed with a bit of cup is normally the best place to be. I'm not sure what the wind forecast is, um, but it's been pretty windy the last few days, so uh, any significant wind will also play a bit of havoc, but um, we're... I think it'll be a pretty decent um, playing field for everyone. Uh, starting with the first race, and it's the two-year-old open handicap. There's already been two scratchings of the two Darley horses. Apparently, a little bit of a virus might have gone through their uh, their two-year-old stable, and uh, early scratchings of Thrilled and Petrea. I'm hearing that there might be a couple more scratchings, but we'll. We'll play it as if those horses are still going to be in uh, at this stage. Um, basically, when I went through this race, I thought most horses were, were tough to put a uh, well, were tough to put a line through. There was basically none that could put a line through. Um, going quickly through them, number one, good fella, who is stage one of the horses stage. I heard may not be running. He drew wide here in this. This race uh, behind Louisa, which was a very strong race. Draws widest here in the Bill and Baker's colours. And he's basically eased out of the race. Uh, back to last position. You can see that he's well, well back and well off the lead. And they do sprint home pretty sharply. And he picks up a few positions. I didn't think his effort was too bad. And definitely, if he does show up... Uh, He's got a winning chance. He does draw awkwardly again in the outside gate, which is a bit of an issue. Um, but he's definitely improved. I did like its last 150, 200 metres there against the slow pace. So he looks to have ability. Uh, appetising second trial was an improver. Didn't really want to worry with it too much. It was probably one of the better risks in the race. This horse I'm... Heavily interested in in Dahard. Um, he's in the outside Khan here, who's the, the, the first race the Jim Crack winner, I think it was. Um, Dahad's outside him. Showtime, he came out and ran second last week, so this has probably been one of the stronger two-year-old trials so far seen. Dahad just pushes out of this pocket here. He's definitely revved, but this was his first trial uh, almost a month ago now, and a solid enough trial. Comes out again two weeks ago. And this is him out wide this time. It's three wide outside the leaders. Just behind him, settling down was Bull Market on uh, poetic. Um, in the white cap here, the, the winner Poetic Charmer, who is also in this race at the moment. Another one that possibly may come out, but uh, at the moment, on gate one and quite an interesting runner. The front runner. From Dahad, the outside, Villa Carlotta starting to come into I like that Dahad or Dahad was sat, sat wide here and it still looks nice and strong. He has had the extra trial, but that should put him in good stead to be really competitive in this race on Saturday. Poetic Charmer gets away from him a little bit late, but he doesn't look under pressure. He looks like he's handled that wide run really well and he looks ready to go. Um, Poetic Charmer we've already covered. The two good Alphan horses are now out. Kangazai and Madame Moustache. We'll have a look at them because I'm just 
I'm a little bit concerned about the format of this race. I think that Jorda, because she was such an immature type, for her to be able to take care of these horses so well, even though they've got excuses. This is Kanga's eye missing the kick terribly on debut. Madame Moustache on the inside also finds trouble. Uh, they run along fairly solidly. Not a lot happens. Madame Moustache has had the perfect run behind. And Kanga's eye saves a lot of run. Saves a lot of ground, sorry, in the run. Madame Moustache gets checked and knocks over Gerald Ryan's horse. Picks itself up and comes again late. Kanga's eye misses the kick, gets all the breaks through. Held up a little bit, but then hits the line solidly. I'm just a little bit of a knock on that form. Um, I'm saying that I'd rather be with the hard if the other horses come out. Poetic Charmer as well if he stays in. And I'm um, going to risk those two horses. They're again drawn you know, inside. I think it'll end up possibly in gate one. Madame Moustache loses Bowman um, for O'Hara. And Kanga's eyes draws wide again in nine. If it misses the kick a little bit, it's in a nightmare. So not saying that the first starters also here in um, pricing power improved at second trial. Um, good fella if it gets a, if it remains in the race is the one that I would like to spec coming out of a stronger race in my opinion in Louise's race, which was the, ran the week later. And uh, but m mainly I'm looking at that uh, hard as the first starter as my main go here. If Poetic Charm doesn't line up, I really like that form line and that Khan trial has proved really strong and it looks definitely like it's improved since then. Race two, not going to spend much time here. Fabrizio comes up very short, uh, backing up from that Epsom run. If that run hasn't killed it, you'd say it would just about be winning this. If it goes back to its performance two starts ago where it, uh, where it won over this track and distance by four lengths uh, in pressing time and it just basically wins on that run. Uh, it did get tired late last start but obviously did get over racing. Doesn't look any pressure here at all. Um, basically looks to lead on its own. Hearns Oaks the only horse that possibly could sit anywhere near it you would imagine. Uh, the rest are going to look for a, a sit and it'll be a sprint home. So, Hawkinson's the obvious, the obvious danger. Had similar runs. Actually beat uh, Fabrizio home in the Epsom handicap last start, but only got nabbed at sort of the last 50 metres there where when uh, Fabrizio was weakening. So, the ball's in Fabrizio's court and it's uh, definitely its race to win or, or lose and, and Torgerson's probably the only realistic danger, our boy Nicholas wasn't too bad uh, very late last time. Drops in weight significantly, but uh, it would be hard to... It would basically have to be Torgerson and Fabrizio not showing up due to being just tired from their, their preparation to, to to lose this race, I would imagine. It definitely looks a two-horse race and Fabrizio a strong advantage over Torgerson, especially tactically. Race three, and we find Bazell comes up at quite a short price favourite here. A few queries on it that it's it's well, it's only it's had two runs this time in. It's both runs, it's had solid paces set up for it. It's had perfect runs, and it's and it's finished the races off well for comfortable victories. There's no doubt about that. It was a desperately unlucky um, loser on debut, so it possibly could be undefeated. But um, now goes from, so it's gone 11.50, 13.50 to the mile now. It goes up in weight, and if anything, it's a stronger race than it met last start, even though it was open class, as in open age class. Um, so it's definitely not a gimme, considering it's a dollar ninety chance, but it does hit the line like a nice horse. We'll watch, the, this, this is last start where they ran along significantly faster than average and it was able to sit off them and when working the race well and there's not a great depth to the form behind this which is a bit of an issue and it was a dollar forty favorite so the four and a half length win margin is probably expected considering how well things went for it in transit and uh I wouldn't be jumping out of the ground to back anything it beats. So 
It's a very positive winner on two occasions, but you're getting a price to match, and I wouldn't be too excited at the 190, even though I expect it to run very well again. Uh, Alliterate jumped to the mile last time, having had a 1,011, 1280, 12 straight to a mile and one against uh, open class in benchmark 65. That's a good lead up for this. Um, it can be better for the mile run and, and can run a race. I thought his Dallin has been a little bit unlucky uh, last start. It was probably didn't really appreciate leading in the worst part. They might have gone a bit slow for it there, if anything. I'd imagine that if it gets a more solid tempo or a sit uh, here and gets its chance to finish off, it'll, it'll be a much better horse and can improve. The horse that I thought was actually the strongest danger to the favourite Bazell was this horse here in Power Law. It's um, one on debut in strong time, strong fashion. 42 days off with a trial in between, which is a, a go of Anthony Cummings and shows up here in a strong race behind Nicolance off a very, very slow tempo. It's back second last on the inside here. From this race, we've already seen coming through, come out and run really well. Sorry, sorry, we have. <laughs> Pardon me. The previous race with Nicolance form, uh, we've seen everything basically come out of this race, come out and and run very well. So I think this form is going to turn out pretty strong. Coming through will go down and win a black type race in Melbourne. And, and Nicolance is low flying. So I think this is a good form race for this. I like that he's... He's gone the 42 days and now he's backing it up seven days later off this run. Extremely slow tempo here. The horse gets to the outside and did not really punished for mine. I thought it was given a pretty soft time of things. Uh, even here we've seen he's not really getting into him too strongly. And Lady's very soft on him and the horse that's getting away from him a bit is, is a very smart animal for mine. He's really not running away from him too hard, considering he's not got a lot of pressure being put on him from mine. So I think he's a big improver. He'll he'll appreciate the step up to the mile in Ramwick. Only little concern is fitness second up at a mile at Ramwick. Uh, off, off not a real tough run. Cross stitch is interesting with the blinkers put on. I thought she was a little bit disappointing, even though she won last start. She's probably a bit lucky. Three weeks between runs. It really is Bazell's race to lose, and I think Power Law is the big improver with Hez Dallin maybe somewhere there as well. Alliterate each way. It's, it's the, probably the best rough in the race, about $15, having its second run now at a mile after winning last start. Race four and the highway, and very surprised to see Exton go up $5. Quite an inexperienced jockey on the horse, and that is probably why they've decided to risk it. But uh, I, I'd probably, I've got it marked three dollars in the early price, and I'd probably mark it closer to one fifty if it had a senior, uh, more experienced rider on it. It does look to have a very solid class edge on these horses. It's coming out of the, the Sprite race, uh, where in times of wars come out one impressively non peril had a bit of poor luck uh, today at Gosford, but the form does look to be pretty strong out of it. Sedanza, who ran last beaten uh, nine, you know, 4.3s, come out and bolted in at the Provincials. Um, in times of wars, come out and won in town. So it does look a very solid form race, and it's probably dropping in class, if anything, and dropping a kilo and a half in weight, even though it's going from three-year-old grade back to open grade. Pumpkin pie, uh, well, we'll just show that run too, that it had no luck here. Hexteen back, ends up sitting wide no cover throughout. Really given little hope, ends up four or five wide around the turn in the straight. And considering there's not a lot of urging going on, the horse is still quite strong late, so hit run was Full of merit there, probably wins the race with the senior jockey on that time. Again, we're going to face the same sort of issue, but it does have a soft gate, and it's just got to have even luck, you'd think. 
to be right there. This is the horse pumpkin pie from the Danny Williams yard. Trying conditions this day at Goulburn where we, they got a really bad storm halfway throughout the day and this horse just sat very wide and, and won strongly. Uh, obviously, it was, it was a, I think it was a six or a five by the time the race came here, but it was still a good effort to this sort of get through this sort of weather and conditions on your first start and win. Went straight from 1,000 to 1,200, made into class two, which is not easy to do either of those things. Sat back off a, a fast tempo. Oh, sorry, it suddenly sat off a solid tempo. Ducks back to the inside here. He puts these horses away pretty quickly. Just looks like a horse with years. Now stays at 1,200, which is interesting, probably suitable. And class two, it's already won at class two level, so you know it's up to this sort of level as well. Its uh, its debut win was very strong time-wise, and, and it looks like uh, that form's going to hold up pretty solidly. It definitely looks a horse on the up. The other horse I thought was a winning chance. I didn't think there were too many winning chances. Was Nick's Vendetta. It's you forgive its first run had absolutely no luck. Improved with the young apprentice on and just got a narrow victory at Port Macquarie. This is probably tougher, but uh, and it's got to carry the 59, but and a bit of wide gate. It does have ability, and if there is anything go wrong with those two favourites, they are drawn inside. Um, maybe uh, Nick's Vendetta is the swooper. Race five. And not a race of too much excitement here. It's quite a few queries, I thought. I thought the plays were... Bull Rush is now going to be fit, but I'm not sure that he's come back at a level that he went out. This is probably the day we're going to find out. He should get a soft enough time of it with probably Royal Tudor up there somewhere around him and maybe Moa being a bit more aggressively ridden today. Um... So that does look to be an even enough to solid tempo. I thought Man of His Words absolutely flying and, and Royal Tudor really picked up second up and I thought they were the ones um, around Bull Rush who can certainly win uh, third up now after two solid efforts. So Bull Rush is the one that's, that's led and it actually looked like it ran along here but it was controlling the tempo quite solidly. Extensible has run okay at, at stakes level since beats at home, but they did dominate the rest here. You would think that a similar effort puts him in the finish. Uh, Royal Tudors resumed in the new market. Was it the, uh, the Cameron Handicap at Beaumont? And then came out and was pretty solid here, even though he knocks over the, the coming source pretty late. They did, again, ran away from the field pretty solidly. He can only improve from that. You'd think it's his only second run back. So he's, he's going to run a solid race. And this Brisbane Raider... Uh, the best part of this horse's race is that his last part. And... See here, he comes from last and widest. Rounds him up solidly. 1400 is probably a little query with this horse, but he did sort of run out 1350 early in his career very strongly, even though it was against weaker grade. If he can run that 1400 out, I think he'll be in the finish here. I think he's probably the little bit of value in the race at the moment because it does look a bit of solid tempo and he does look the sole closer that will be strong late. This that was two runs ago when he won and. This was his last run back here. Uh, he just has absolutely no luck in the run. Trying to get to the outside, cuts back to the inside, never really gets out and does go to the line. Looking like he should have been the winner. Still never gets a real clear shot at them until this stage here and he picks up, picks up quite solidly. So he was very stiff there, and I think he can run a race here. So the three three solid chances for mine are, are Bull Rush, 
Royal Tudor, man of his word, with the clear value to Royal Tudor, a man of his word in the early markets. Row six, the city's Tattersall, and I think the market's going to change a bit here before race goes. At the moment, Janub's favourite around the $3.80 mark. Sense of occasion, four sixty. dollars Allegria, $4.00. I really think that Allegria and Sensification will be nice and tight in the market. I think they'll firm up. The ratings gurus will find Kate Crusader. I'm not sure that it's got a setup that I want to be involved in. It got beaten at Port Macquarie last start over 2,000. Now rises to 2,400 for the first time. And really, it will take a big performance to, to knock that off uh, at first go at the trip. Allegria is the one that does have that. 2400 meter run under its belt now and three weeks between runs looks like she's ready to go since of occasions just flying for mine we'll just have a quick look at his replay he's the one in the in the metrop that worked quite hard stuck wide here early outside dic and antonio giuseppe eventually does slot in to a forward position but then is the one that sort of flushed out earliest and he still in this position here, he's still strong late, beats Janoub home, so it's hard to see Janoub turning the tables on him, that's for sure. It's hard fit now, everything's, basically every box is ticked with sensification. Tim Clark gets back on him after winning on him two, three starts ago, and uh, can't really see him running a poor race. Allegri is the other one that was forced to make that early move last time. At first run up to 2,400 metres off a slow pace and just got caught late. Um, definitely the nod to sense of occasion over Allegria and quite keen on it actually um, in this race. The Brian Crowley, an interesting race here. You've got Suchet resuming. El Davino, five weeks between runs, back in trip, blinkers on. Gay Waterhouse, 1,400 back to 1,200 is a very rare thing. Normally she likes to keep sort of stepping them up rather than pushing them back, and it's a it's a funny one. They're obviously still trying to figure the horse out. Uh, he can be competitive, but he's a query runner. Guard of Honours had four weeks between runs, trialled really well in between at the Provincials. 1,200 metres is the query for him, for mine. He's got a wide gate. He's got a change in jockey, and... He looks a horse that could possibly be vulnerable. Super Maxi, low flying, steps up heavily in grade, but it's just it's running time. It's doing everything right, this preparation. The only time it got beat was by upscale, who went tremendously well uh, to beat at that time, and it was probably one of the better runs of his career that time, even though he was beaten. And then he came out and put that put them out of the way again. So he's going well. Hair trigger is probably the one for mine that will be hardest to beat, uh, but it draws the inside gate from Schofield, and it's hard to be confident there either. I thought Star of Monsoon was a monstrous run last start behind Nicolance. Obviously, that form's holding up well with uh, Nicolance winning again, Palladian coming out winning in town. Raiden wasn't as impressive, and Basti came out and got beaten today, but. Um, that's here nor there. I, I really think the first three over the line were kind of dominant over the rest and, and Star of Monsoon was forced back and wide from its draw that day. Not a lot of tempo on and really ran home well. Looks more pressure here and he does look horse that can run a race at sort of, I think they put up 66 to 1, which was crazy, but it's still 25 to 1 and that looks well and truly a uh, good enough price to, to get excited about. This horse is an interesting horse. It's, it's called Travancore, seven weeks between runs. At his last here this day. He's a half to speed, same stable Bryce Hayes. Just like the way he quickens extremely quickly, even though he looks to be hanging a little bit at the same time. Puts them away inside 100 metres and races away from them. Uh, he's entitled to get a little bit late there. It's only his second start in the race. Huge jump in grade here, but seven weeks is a long time for a horse like this to possibly be able to improve. So... He's at about the 100 to 1, 125 to 1 mark, and he, he shouldn't be let under your guard at that sort of price. He's definitely worth having a look at. Sprite's another horse that, to me, looks 
looks very interesting also yeah, he has got that in times of war form um, as you're saying uh, sedans has come out and won after running last in this race and it does look like it's going to be a very strong form race uh, what I liked about her there was it was not easy to run in on this day and even though they have gone solid up front not, not overly quick but solid she she was one of the few this is Sprite coming through in Jeff and White Ever White's colours She's one of the few all day that made ground and won. So, and she's very strong late. 1,100 metres again. Resuming now up to 1,200. And uh, I really like the way she attacked the line there. She's about $17. And I expect that to be shorter come race time. She, she looks really well placed. As does the bottom horse here in suspenders who's... Come out and won a three-year-old after sitting three wide outside. A couple of horses that were race fit beat them. Sat outside a slowish pace last time with a huge weight, 62 kilos, and again beat them. She looks a horse that's right on the up. Drops eight kilos. And I do think that there's value in this race around the favourites. It is a bit of a guesswork, but I think Star of Monsoon Sprite Suspenders are the one that I could play. And I think Hair Trigger is the horse to beat, for, but it does have gate one. So probably saving on it as a, as a chop out sort of situation and making the three roughies the results. Uh, even something tiny on Trevancore, I, I wouldn't want it at 125 to 1 to go around a loser for me. The Nivison for the Mares. And this horse here in Egyptian Symbols, the one that I've been waiting for personally. Would have liked to see her resuming at 1100, but she's had a 900 meter and then a back to 800 meter trial. She's obviously been in work for quite a while, and this is her back fourth last here in this trial. What I like about this filly or mare is that when she goes, she goes quick. She's just got that push button acceleration. She looks like she's come back at stronger mare after a disappointing prep results wise last time, even though she was unlucky. And there she goes, showing that. Really At strong turn of foot. Um, and that was an impressive trial win. Came out and trialed again, giving a quiet trial behind some answers that was beaten a long way, but completely irrelevant. She's the one to beat here. I think the dangers are that the two Snowden runners in Nancy, who's got had one run back, a little bit disappointing there, even though she was not in the right spot, but had five weeks off and she can improve artistry first up set to run really well. I thought her trials have been really solid. The two's got a host of gear changes, but it's drawn the right spot. Savaro back in trip uh, is, is suitable and racing well enough off that um, Tiri Stakes run to run well. I think they are the main chances. Uh, Kimberly Star, I wouldn't be surprised to see her improve. But uh, Rule the River for mine was not been trialling extremely well. Does draw the inside. A uh, funny, funny jockey in um, Paul King. But wouldn't be surprised to see it pop up, that's for sure. Betting wise, I think Egyptian Symbol into 320 is short enough over the 1200 first up. Um, but uh, it, I couldn't really bet anything confidently to beat it. I think uh, maybe artist, you've got the artistry Savaro Nancy and possibly for two of the ones that look the knockouts against her uh, for quality players and things like that. Um, but a good race. Last race and a similar sort of thing to mine where I've got a horse in speed here who's, who's I wanted to find something to beat it. But really, at the end of the day, I sort of found excuses for most runners. It's going to be good pressure with how much you love me ninth legion drawn wide is probably not going to be right up on the speed but it'll be looking for a spot that's a good idea drawn wide uh, smart volatility kicking up king like will be right there cool rings up on the inside ins and out fine mist apparently going back there's a lot of horses the decision time harara sarajevo all looking for spots and i thought the bottom two really appealed i didn't mind the trial of King like and I thought they probably rounded out the stronger hopes in the race but uh, Le Cordon Bleu has trialed okay drawn wide and I thought it might stay out of trouble and be strong late and Spieth 
draw on the inside, J Ford to ride. If he gets any luck and stays out of trouble, clear running in the straight. I don't know how they're going to hold him out. I think he looks exceptionally hard to beat, the one with the upside. I thought Kaepernick was the one that possibly could improve, but he was too bad to be true last start, and I couldn't be involved in him too heavily at all uh, with any confidence coming off that run. But uh, Spieth in the closer, clearly for mine. And uh, the Cordon Bleu, the, the value fresh over the 1100 with, with the speed on wide gate. King likes the one that could, could definitely blow them away uh, if he's in the mood. So that wraps up uh, the Randwick side of things. I'll, I'll try and get through Caulfield as well. I don't know how long this is going forward, but I'll... I'm keen to get through it myself. So, first race, uh, Caulfield, 1,400 metres for the Phillies. Interested to see Skylight Blow back in trip, blinkers off. Does have that quality, comes out of those races. Well, the last start of the flight, Group 1 flight stakes behind Global Glamour. Yankee Rose, obviously, we've seen those horses both come out and win. Only beaten four lengths that day, oh, sorry, seven lengths into fourth position. That's still good form for this. Life still feed come out dominantly first up over 1200 meters after never racing over that far and and ran away from them. Um, the time was not spectacular and she comes up very short. I think she's probably the horse to beat, but two dollars ten seems very very short for a horse that's never been to 1400 meters. Second up wide gate and a few things against definitely can win, but I'm a little bit apprehensive to chime in. I think the horse that I'm I've got a little bit of time for this. Jennifer Lynn. If it was Flemington, I'd be keen. Uh, if she's still around the $15 mark, I'm keen for her to get over further than this. I'm surprised that they've sort of gone 11, 14, 14, but I think it'll be stepped up in trip next time. And if she doesn't win today, I think she'll run positively and she can measure up into some of the more distance races later in the carnival. Go Go Grace was a horse that could improve. I thought Swampland was very good first up against a slow pace and an improver and the bottom horse in Petition's another horse that's very strong, not had a lot of luck in its career area, two runs to date and definitely can improve significantly if she can get out and rolling and she's another one that can improve over further. So I think 420 is fair enough for Skylight Glow. I'd probably say that sort of slide feed should be similar sort of price. Uh, Go Go Grace around the $16 mark is a little bit of value. Any any horse that faced that breeze last start at Flemington, I'm definitely willing to be, forgive. Jennifer Lynn definitely looks a, a strong improver from the right stable. Blake Shin to ride. If it was a mile, I'd be extremely keen on her. Uh, 1400s, a little bit of a query around Caulfield, but if she has any luck and gets a toe into it and gets through those gears, I think she'd be very strong. Swampland. Around the $19 mark looks good value, and so does Petition at around the $17 mark at the bottom. So probably betting around the favourites here, playing, having small goes on a, a, a decent crack at Jennifer Lynn and two small goes on Swampland and, and Petition and hoping we get a split, maybe chopping out the second favourite uh, Skylight Glow because uh, she's just got a bit of class on these horses and she's already had the mile run, should be strong up on the speed. Race two, the Gothic Stakes, 1,400 metres. Sydney form um, looks pretty good for this race. Morton's Fork and Akatua dominate betting. Probably fair enough. Query for Akatua is that he's coming back from a strongly run 1,550 to a 1,400 that doesn't look to have significant pace into it. It does look to be okay, but not significant. Uh, he's the best horse in the race for mine, but maybe not suited ideally here. He's got the right gate to sort of settle just off him if, if he jumps well, and it's probably all about where he settles here. He can definitely round them up, but if he gets a little bit too far back, I know this race is not the race they're targeting. Uh, it's still worth 120000 I'm sure they want to win it on the way to, say, the Carbine Club, but um, this is not be-all and end-all for them. Morton's Fork looks to get the good set up here. Draws ideally, one well off a first up slow pace and no excuses for him. I thought the other form line, 
uh, the inside aged form line was a little bit soft and I'm keen to bet around those horses whereas the form with Curvature and Appiata I believe coming out of the same race uh, both ran quite well there and, and looked good roughies for at least exotic players and Peacock was the other horse that I thought was ready to go now drawn a low gate 25 to 1 each way looks at a good knockout price and definitely one I'll be throwing into the multis but probably a race that I'd have to back Morton's fork before Akatua even though I definitely believe Akatua is the pick of them the horses he just gets to set up the run and more suited at 1400 metres at this stage in its preparation and something small maybe on Peacock each way. Race 3, Alinghi Stakes over the 1100. We've got queries galore here in first up runners everywhere. Uh, I love it, Almighty Girl, Flippant, Palazzo, Publico, Vesele, all first up. Um, Super Cash has had the run and run well. Chloe and Paris ran last in the fast sprint race behind Extreme Choice off a long spell. Hallucinari was in this race and second first up. Uh, very unlucky before having absolutely no luck and a complete can forgive last time. Back to 1100 looks suitable for it and uh, I thought it could improve. Really tough race. Betting is going to be very important here. I think there'll be some significant shifts that will be worth taking note of because of the nature of the race and the nature that a lot of these horses are first up. Almighty Girl's definitely got the ability to win the race, as does Flippant. I think Vesele is one that I want to risk a little bit, and I'm not over the moon with Super Cash's first up win, but it's definitely got a fitness edge on most of them, so it puts it in the race, and then we've got a Lucinari. I'm looking probably to risk Chloe in Paris again from gate one. It's just such a long spell, and it's, I just want to see her do a little bit more than she did last start. So if I'm to have a bet here, I'm, I'm watching betting closely late, and I'm looking at Almighty Girl Flippant. Super Cash Lucinari is the four strong winning chances in the race and Lucinari around $19 is uh, probably the value even though it's drawn really wide. But uh, Abdullah takes the ride. Race four for the Phillies again over the 2,000 metres and Mo Coins a horse that was heavily flattered last start in Sydney. I'm not sure how that form measures up here but I'm, I'm keen to bet around it even Going out to the 2,000 metres, it just had everything fall its way last start. The bias, said, even though it was a bit of a slow tempo, and she did look a clear winner. Nemrud was definitely a certainty beaten that ran second to it, and the others were just all cluttered up, and everything went, went against them. I just I'd have to say that um, Mo Queen's one of the more flattered runners for quite some time. Um, so I'll be definitely thinking it's going to come up under the odds here. I think I've got it marked about double of what it is. Um, in its early pricing. Sebring Dreams, the interesting horse, comes out of that uh, thousand guineas. Uh, blinkers come off blinkers again. I'm not, not a big fan of that. I did. It just didn't charge through the line enough for me to be really keen on it here, even though it did run well um, last start. It was a bit of a slow pace, and the race doesn't look like it didn't look exceptional, even though it was a group one. So definitely a step back in in grade here and, and the step up in distance doesn't look too bad but it's drawn wide and I'm just not sure. Bella Solestra was pace affected last start on uh, but did have bias helping it and did ch come down the same lane as the winner and they were dominant over the rest so you've got to say that uh, you've got to be fairly neutral on that run. 2000 metres looks okay and it definitely looks a player. Savan's very interesting for me, coming off uh, a last start win. After two two runs, I really like this cross-stitch Stanilicious form. Uh, it was only first up the, the, the day it ran behind Evacuation. Um, I just want to watch this replay. All I'm really interested in is it's its fourth here. This horse came out and won impressively at Gosford today. I think it's a horse that can go on as well, but that's a different story in Righteous Mane. It's sort of flushed out quite early here because they have gone slow. And I do still think, even though it hasn't broken through, this horse, Drakenfels, is a, is a top season. It was definitely a black type horse, even though it's still a maiden. What I like about Savan is that she 
really gets working through her gears. You can see all these horses are sprinting at their top. None of these horses are stopping. These two smarter horses are just running away from them. And Savan, under minimal pressure, just looks to do it quite easily. I think she's big value around the $9.50 mark. I think she's a very nice horse, and uh, I like that she's coming from a different form line to the rest of the horses here. Um, Eleonora comes out of the uh, serene, serenely distinct uh, Bella Soriola Astra race. We'll just watch Eleonora is the one on the fence here. Bella Soriola Astra is back last. There's a number of runners in this race that are uh, running again. But we'll see that Eleonora basically never gets out at any stage. Bella Sorrel Astro gets his cover the whole way and only pulls out late. And, and this is the winner, Serenely Discreet, uh, who basically comes whizzing down the outside. And this is Eleonora back here after being chopped out. Basically doesn't take part. I'm still thinking that $5 is quite short for Eleonora off a run like that, even though it was a solid enough win the start before it. Uh, can't see why it would be five dollars and and Savan's going around nine fifty. Um, quite keen on Savan each way here, as I couldn't find too many knockouts down the list. Uh, yeah, so so Savan each way for me in that race. Caulfield Classic, and I really am keen on the. Chances of good standing here. The top two come out of the Caulfield Guineas. It just has to be the best form line. Um, we'll see that good standing. Looks like he's going to get in here, but never does. They are running along um, a fast time for a group one. So for him to sit three wide outside the pace at Caulfield uh, for a mile. And we'll see here. This is Saberge is back. Just getting the suck run of all time. Just spending nothing. Um... Good standing hits the front here. Seaburge ends up nearly getting on his back and then pulls it around one horse and never held up. His momentum's kept the whole way. What I like a good, about good standing here is this last 150 metres where he's fighting back underneath Sacred Elixir and, and other horses. Um, I really thought his effort was very good. Uh, I'm, and I'll be keen on him to beat this Hurst Seaburge home again who even though he's finishing strongly you'll see when he pulls up he pulls up quickly too I just I think he's a risk at a strong 2000 whereas I think good standing's going to get everything in its favour it's got Sheen soft gate and it'll just be very hard to beat I'm interested to see why Bowman got off it but uh, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe the quick backup wasn't expected. He'd already committed to Winebush, who he won on the previous start. The other runner in the race I'm keen to look at is this high lad. They've gone a solid sort of tempo here, and he sat outside the, in, in this mad headwind. And if you want to see where the other two horses that led with him finish up, he, he absolutely flogs them. The other thing I like is that this horse here, Odin, who's had the cold sit on him back in the field, looks like he's certainly to go past him and, and doesn't. Uh, the horse fights back and beats him, so he's got a big ticker, and that was his first run for 29 days, and he was going 13, 40 metres up to 1,800, third start in a race. So he's got some staying potential, this guy, High Lad, and if he rolls forward, he may be tough to get past. Um, Kent was the other horse that I was interested in around the 21 mark who had no luck. Other horses in the betting that uh, Throstle's got a big spruik on it, kept pulled up with a heart arrhythmia, has been heavily backed already for this race, only around the $10 mark. I can't come into it at that. Winebush, I thought was every chance last start, but strong on the line. Uh, Rocketeer had exactly the same sort of every chance, and, and Winebush still fought it off. Uh, so I'm not too excited about that form line, even though I think Winebush is on the up. Inference also comes up quite short here, around the same sort of $9.50, $10 mark. Not sold on it. 
thought it was a bit unlucky last start, but still not convinced. And um, that's it for the race. Good standing from High Lad. Good, good standing clearly from High Lad. And then and Kent, the value runner for mine in the Labrokes Caulfield Classic. Um, certainly not saying Seaburge can't win there, but I've got it marked much longer around, uh, around the $7 mark. Coonji Cup, 2,000 metres. It somewhat comes off two solid weight for age wins. Every possible chance in both of those and was well set up last time, but does look well set up again here. The weight's probably the only thing you'd have to query. I'm a bit upset with the scratching of Tark when I thought it was it was uh, the good value danger. Uh, and it's, it's come out. Morris ran well last time, did have its chance there and everything's set up and it looks like it'll get a strong tempo again here with Tom Melbourne and the cleaner involved. It's really hard to come at anything other than those two. Vamber is not convincing me that he's absolutely flying, but um, he can definitely surprise here and, and Zomi's looked the one that was going to be on pace tough and battle on and might just be in the right spot at the right time. Um, probably the first challenge of the two leaders. It's somewhat with Bowman, even though it carries a big weight, just looks to be the one. Um, I can't step into $2.70 it, but um, I'll, uh, for the sake of tipping a horse, it, it would be my definite on top selection from Nozomi each way down in the weights. Don't want to spend too much time on that race. Sorry, I'm not not too excited by it. Uh, now we get to the Phillies. The Tristark 1400 Tycoon Tara was dominant last start over a first seal. Oh, his first seal that was first up from a spell did look like it was going to just chime in and go straight past them on the term there before knocking up. I'm surprised to see first seals around the 750 mark and and Tycoon Tara is three dollars. I would have expected sort of more about a five to two, four to one uh, sort of spread uh, about the two of them. Even though um, Tycoon Tara was dominant over it late last start, there, there's plenty of improvement to be had from from first seal. Uh, going down the page, Pearls has had its chance behind Tycoon Tara last start and probably placed best again here. French Emotion was flattered for mine last time. Can't have it over 1400 with a solid tempo. Danish Twist ran very well over 1,200 first up. Now has to step up 200 metres, a wide gate, and changing states. Really big ask for it for a horse that's marked $4.80. I'm not sure how it can possibly be shorter than first seal in the market, but it is. Um, I thought Coronation Shallon ran okay first up. Den Magic's a horse that can definitely hold a position sort of two or three back off the lead and be dangerous late. And uh, Shailia does look to have upside. So Tycoon Tara's just got all the boxes ticked once again. Looks to get the lead. Um, I can't see anything really taking on unless Coronation Shallon gets a bit excited. And she should control the tempo again. In that regard, Den Magic's probably the biggest danger. It has the big sprint on it. I'm not sure where First Seal's going to get to from the gate. It might give them a bit of a start. And... Might do it tough, but with even luck, I'd be very surprised if Tycoon Tara first seal don't just dominate these uh, with a bit of class. It is a big ask for Danish twist and, and Den Magic's the knockout uh, that could get the right run and be coming after them late. Caulfield Cup, and I'll probably do another video just for this uh, because there's so much to go through on the race. Jamaica firstly comes through with like a flawless preparation, dominant in the naturalism, then chased uh, Hartnell in vain last start, but really did put a margin on the rest of them, drops in weight, gets up to 2,500 metres that it looks like it's not going to have an issue with, and uh, just has to be the, the local horse to beat. Um, so John Hawkwood's the other one I thought is going well, and coming from that different form line in the Metrop, it's a lightly raced eight-year-old that's Got a bit of tactical speed draws, ideally 2,400 metres is fine. And his two runs back have probably been career best for mine. So he's definitely looking value around the $17, $18 mark. Tally looks set up to run well. 
the internationals are interesting. I thought going back through the replays that Exospheric uh, looks very one-paced and possibly a little bit too one-paced for mine. Scottish is the one that can get up on the speed and has a bit of a turn of foot, but not proven at the trip. But usually, sort of around 2,000 metres, there tends to tends to come here, and and you can stretch them a little bit further. It is only lightly raced, so can can definitely get there. Sir Isaac Newton, I'm probably going to risk with the foreign jockey, and and never one past 2,000 metres either, and it looks a bit one paced, and I think it'll get to an awkward position. Articus's form. Doesn't look too flash on paper, like class-wise. It got to the outside fence last start and looked to have found the faster going. Um, Andreas Waller is a great trainer. He was the, the trainer of protectionist and obviously knows what it takes to win a big race out here. So I'm, I'm hoping that it's the right horse for the job for for the uh, the owners. I'm sure they paid a bit of money for it and hopefully it runs well from them. But I'll be I'll be risking it tomorrow. And that's the that's the internationals covered. Uh, for me, Scottish is the clear pick of them, and Exospheric is the clear second pick. Um, so, for me, I, I'd probably speculate the overseas horses, and uh, as I think Jamaica is well and truly into short enough odds, even though it is the clear best runner from our uh, country. But, um, yeah, small plays, Scottish Exospheric, maybe, but definitely Scottish and definitely having something on Sir John Hawkwood around the $17 mark. As I said, I'll do a, I'll do a bit of a special if I get a chance on, the, on that race alone. Race 9, the Caulfield Sprint, we're on the home straight. I thought that speed here is the key. It'll be very interesting to see what Lankin Rupee does from gate 1, what they do from a wide gate with Fartner after going a bit too slow on it. Last time, they took the sit on over 1,200 with our boy Malachi last start. And he's now drawn the outside gate. Sunday Escapes, another one that draws wide, has speed when they want to use it, but haven't been. Take Fright again up there. So it, it does look a race of decent pressure. I think there's some 1,000-metre horses in this race that look like improvers, which are Vador and Wild Rain, which look to get the right runs. Just off the speed and look a bit of value for multiple players. I think Fartner can improve, but I just wide back to 1,000. It's probably a bit of a nightmare, and I think the, uh, it all does look like it sets up for Hellbent again. It's worth watching the replay just for watching the replay. Uh, there was only a steady tempo last start. The horse gets back, and what he does here, he pulls out, loses a bit of momentum wide. This horse, Shidel's come out and obviously won again, or won since. Which proves this was just an incredible sustained sprint and clearly his best run since joining the all powerful Darren uh, Wee stable. It's just incredible what he does this last hundred to good horses here. I really thought yeah, if he repeats that, he probably just beats these. He looks like he's going to get the setup pace wise, and yeah, it's going to be very hard to hold him out if you can run on. Um, if you can't. I think Bedora and, and Wild Rainer are the uh, the value runners. Lucky last and a very tough race to finish today. Takedown has to be the, the horse you put on top. Uh, two two wins in a row in Sydney, back from a spell, back from a tie back operation to help with his breathing. He'll get on pace here very cheaply by the look of it. There'll be maybe May Bills drawn inside. It might kick up and give him something to chase. I'm sure there'll be a few others roll forward and there'll be decent tempo, but that, that's fine for him. He's tough. Um, May Bill is an interesting horse first up from New Zealand and uh, does have plenty of ability. I'm not sure why he was scratched the other day and now stretches out to 1,400 first up, which is a bit of a query, but can run well. Uh, good project can... Complete forgive first up can improve. Fast and rocking was a little bit stiff last time, but I'm still worried about him running a 1,400 out, and I'm probably betting around him. Amavasia ran very well first up against a slow pace. 1,400 second up looks ideal, even though it's drawn a nightmare gate in 16, but you're getting 20 to 1, so that's pretty fair. 
Hoff Garden ran really well first up against a slow tempo and just never runs a bad race. And Voodoo Lad, who's had 16 starts, never been unplaced in his career. 1,400 seems to do him out, so he'll need beyond every chance to, to probably beat these, even though he is a 5-2 to two favourite, which seems a bit a bit short uh, for mine. So that's the two meetings covered. Uh, that, that last race there, right, I'm, I'm not too keen on betting too much, but just looking for value again. Good project, $15 looks okay. $4 takedown looks fine. Um, Amavatio, $19 looks more than fine. Mobile, $17 is worth probably, if you're betting in the race, not losing. If he if he wins, he's a very talented horse. And Hofgartner and the $10 chance is probably about right. Um, there was another knockout down the bottom in Lucky Liberty who rounded them up off a slow pace the other day and a good return to form and does look awesome on the up. He's drawn a bit of a knockout gate in gate two if he gets a shot at him late. So that's the meeting covered. Sorry, I probably talked a bit fast and tried to push through it as quickly as I could. But uh, hopefully uh, there's something there and uh, we have a good day Saturday. So good luck for Caulfield Cup Day. Thanks, guys.